Okay, this is Susan Henderson from Disability Rights Education and Defense Fund. Thank you for joining us this morning for a presentation from Dr. Tri Do and Ben Chen, um, who are going to talk about um, getting a vaccine at home and how it's happening in Alameda County. So first I'd like to just take a moment to introduce Dr. Do and, and Ben. So Dr. Doe's lived in Alameda County since 1978 and has a background in internal medicine from Santa Clara Valley Medical Center. He's the medical director at the Community Health Center Network in San Leandro, and he's been there since May 2020. And, it's, and he's been leading the COVID testing initiatives. He's also a professor of medicine at UCSF, where he's conducted health disparities research since 2001 and he publishes extensively on vir virology. He's, been, he's here because he's been consulting with the Alameda County um, Public Health on vaccines since they were introduced to the public in December, 2020. Um, ben Chen, who some of you may know, is the Developmental Disabilities Coordinator at, the, at Alameda County, and he's been um, consulting and a part of the Senior and Disability Planning Team on COVID. Um, this year so and last year. So anyway, welcome to both of you. I'll just do a few um, introductory slides to get us started. Okay, so next slide. Okay, okay, perfect. Okay, thanks. I just want to remind people to keep to mute your mics. Thank you. Um, there's in Spanish interpretation available and on the screen, you would go down to the controls at the bottom of your screen, click on the interpretation icon and select the language. In this case, it's Spanish. Thank you. Next. Zoom access is you can, there's closed cap, there's real time captioning right now. What you want to do is click on the closed captioning icon at the bottom of your screen and then captions will appear at the bottom of your screen. Um, we have ASL interpretation by Tammy today. So you would wanna make sure that you are in gallery view and click that gallery view in the upper right-hand corner of your screen. Click the interpreters, Tammy's video and click the three dots up in the right and select pin video. When the slides are showing, you can use the vertical par bar on the right of the, of the slide to make the slides smaller and the interpreters and the speakers' videos will increase in size. Next slide. Um, if you could, zoom for Zoom, better Zoom access for all of us, if you could keep your mics muted and your cameras off during the presentation, that would be great. Next slide. Um, we'll answer the questions that you were submitted um, either during the presentation or at the end of the presentation. So again, thank you all for joining us. And I'll hand it over to you. So, Dave, you can stop sharing your screen. And Dr. Doe, go ahead. Great. It doesn't look. Oh, I'm going to go ahead and share my screen. I was going to say I couldn't find the icon, but I found it. Good morning, everybody. Thank you so much for having me here today. Um, I'm going to be sharing um, a presentation that a working group uh, from the county put together. This um, team has been meeting for the last few months and includes Ben. Um, and a lot of the slides were put together by Andrea Dodge, who is our um, uh, uh, age and seniors um, coordinator for the county. So, um, so many thanks to her. She's not here today. But um, I'll be going over um, some of the planning that's happened as well as reviewing um, uh, many of the questions that uh, were submitted ahead of time. So um, hopefully you'll find the answer to your questions in here. And um, I'll be going over um, how we have um, designed the county's uh, program to um, create access for individuals with uh, lower mobility, including individuals who require um, homebound uh, vaccinations, that is vaccinations in their home um, due to uh, illness or disability. Uh, 
Um, so I'm going to briefly go over some of the demographics of uh, older adult populations in our county. Um, of course, people with um, disabilities uh, uh, span the age range. Um, so I'll, I'll also go over um, um, the access to vaccine for people. Uh, Z Wang, if you could mute your um, microphone, that would be great. I can hear you. Thank you. Um, okay, and um, we're going to go over some of the strategies for vaccination as well as uh, challenges to address. So really quickly, in terms of um, uh, our older population in the county, there are um, nearly a quarter of a million people over the age of 65. Um, uh, 96,000 of those are people over the age of 75. We have um, nearly 16,000 uh, residents of long-term care facilities and residential care facilities for the elderly. Um, so you'll see these abbreviations come up, um, LTCFs and RCFEs. We have approximately 60,000 um, people over the age of 65 on Medi-Cal and 14% are homeless individuals uh, over the age of uh, 60. Um, and that, that number is over 1,000. So when we think about um, serving the, um, the population of, of uh, elders, we're also thinking about um, all the different kinds of settings in which they live. We don't have um, the same kind of data for um, all people in the county living with disabilities, um, but, um, but this gives you a, a sense of those uh, over the age of 65. Um, you can also see the different places where people live. Um, those who are older tend to be uh, focused in some of our higher priority zip codes in Alameda County. By higher pr priority, I, um, what I mean is um, areas that have been harder hit with the pandemic. So it's especially um, you know, important for, for us in the county to be able to, um, to reach these individuals. We also know that a lot of these individuals do not have access to the internet. Um, upwards of more than a third of uh, people in our high priority zip codes uh, do not have uh, broadband, broadband internet access and may not even have cell phones. Uh, to be able to re receive text messages. And this becomes part of our, an important part of our, our strategy for outreach and access. So our strategy around uh, vaccine prioritization and um, access, um, we have um, kind of uh, three different uh, prongs to our strategy. Um, the first, which really began at the end of December last year, um, was to reach those who are in facilities. We know that facilities are extremely high risk because of how, um, uh, how close people are to each other physically and the number of people in these settings. And that's, that's where the, the majority of people who were hospitalized um, uh, in our county and where the cases uh, came from. Uh, so, um, from the beginning, we uh, well there was a there was a federal partnership announced with uh, Walgreens and CVS. Unfortunately, that that program, which which did reach you know several hundred facilities, left out a number of them. So we created partnerships with uh, several pharmacies that you can see listed here, including Hallers, Clayworth, Wellspring, and skilled nursing pharmacy to, um, to go into the facilities and deliver vaccines. Vaccines were provided to both staff and residents. And, um, and uh, in addition to the partnerships I mentioned, there was also a county mobile vaccination team that would go in. Um, this figure here is a little out of date. We've actually given over 35,000 uh, doses um, and um, the federal partnership has come to an end. However, the county continues to partner with the pharmacy shown to go in and uh, provide vaccinations. Many of these facilities also have nurses who can provide vaccines. So we've been delivering um, or allocating vaccines to them so that they can vaccinate their, their staff and, their, and the clients that, that are coming in on a regular basis. 
And then we have um, individuals with um, high mobility. Uh, and by high mobility, we mean that um, they are um, in a wheelchair, they're in a um, uh, motorized uh, chair, they can uh, potentially get to um, our fixed sites. And by fixed sites, I'm talking about the megapods, such as the Coliseum, the county fairgrounds, community pods. We have many, many uh, what are called multi-county entities. These are organizations like Kaiser, Sutter, UCSF, uh, and so forth. And then we have um, individual hospitals like um, Valley Care, Washington Hospital, um, and uh, others. Uh, that uh, people can get to. We have um, many, many health centers in the county, as well as pharmacies um, that have opened up to vaccinations. And, uh, and so um, what we've done at many of these sites is to make them more accessible. And I'll go into a little bit more detail later on what we've done. And then we have um, uh, low mobility individuals who um, require the support of mobile vaccinators. These individuals may be in a um, home type, a group home type of setting or an apartment complex, for example. Um, there are uh, apartment complexes uh, focused on, uh, uh, for example, senior affordable housing. And, uh, and then you, you, we have in, people living in their individual apartments or individual homes. Uh, they may be living by themselves, they may be living with others. And so we had to really think about how to, um, to reach these individuals for vaccines and get the vaccines to them. And you can see our strategy includes um, working with pharmacy partners, home health agencies, uh, county mobile vaccination teams, healthcare for the homeless, as well as CBO teams. And by CBO, I'm talking about uh, community-based organizations. And there are a number of um, uh, mobile teams that are, that are um, gearing up, as well as uh, for home-based vaccinations. Um, some of the above are included, but in addition, we have um, fire departments, um, public health department staff, uh, vendors, and uh, EMS that are coming online. So I'll talk a little bit more about those in later sw uh, slides. So in terms of operationalizing access, um, you know, our starting point is health equity. And what do we mean by health equity? We're, you know, we're talking about um, 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 a number of dimensions of health equity. So we start with something called the Healthy Places in Index. This is a state recognized um, index that maps out where people have the greatest health disparities. And um, we have zip codes of high COVID burden. Uh, language is, of course, very critical, as well as race and ethnicity. We know that um, people of color have been um, more, more um, greatly devastated by the pandemic than, um, than others. And, uh, and so um, ensuring that uh, we're, we're keeping those individuals in mind as we um, develop our, uh, our operational plans. Uh, disability, of course, is, uh, is, is a key component of health equity. Also addressing, um, for, especially for communities of color, um, historical medical abuse and distrust. Um, this is very real, as well as technology barriers. As I mentioned earlier, uh, technology can be a, a real barrier depending on your um, socioeconomic background, but also your um, your state of uh, physical and medical um, disabilities. You can see the um, areas of functional ability that, um, that we considered in coming up with these plans. So they include visual, hearing, mobility, mental health, uh, the inclusion of caregiver relationships, um, safety concerns that people may have about um, coming to a public site, cognitive and intellectual um, ability, speech and verbal, sensory, such as um, uh, including visual but others, um, and memory loss and dementia. So some of the ways, and uh, we, I have about 28 slides, so just know that there are additional uh, details coming, 
but at a high level, some of the mobile and fixed site considerations that we thought about uh, include ADA compliance, um, such as making sites accessible to paratransit and, um, and looking at how we could partner to provide accessible transportation. Um, having senior only hours, days and lanes. Uh, for example, the week of February 15th and actually the entire month of February and March were really devoted to uh, those over the age of 65. Also allowing same day appointments, knowing that um, people may not be able to, um, you know, access the internet or um, navigate the phone system to be able to make appointments ahead of time. Um, also having staff proficient in uh, languages, including ASL was important. Uh, we also wanted to address the di digital divide in terms of how we communicate out vaccine availability. And uh, also in the uh, appointment signup process, we wanted to make sure that it was accessible. Also in terms of health equity, we know that people with, um, who live in richer areas and have broadband internet access and a lot of social capital, they're able to jump the line and get spots. And so we wanted to really exclude line jumping. Um, and, uh, and so for example, at um, you know, several of the pods uh, that it's uh, points of distribution. Sorry, I should um, explain the, uh, the abbreviations, but pod stands for point of distribution. So at several of the points of distribution, we limit access to uh, who can have an appointment or who can get vaccinated based on their zip code, based on um, uh, their age. Um, we also have set up a call center to uh, uh, provide assistance with signup and on-site on support and have also um, leveraged uh, community and AG agency partnerships to help navigate and have a whole list of uh, those agencies we've been working with uh, a little later on. So um, these slides um, just have um, a list of the, the various fixed site locations that are able to, um, to, to, uh, to see folks in the county. I understand there are many of the attendees are from other counties. Uh, I would suggest that you go to your uh, respective county websites and I have some links later on and we'll talk a little bit more about um, what I've been hearing from other counties about uh, homebound vaccinations. But, this just gives you a sense of where Alameda County and its partners are vaccinating. Um, these slides will be distributed, so I won't go over these in detail. Um, but there's two slides going over the different um, hospitals, uh, multi-county entities, and uh, county locations. Um, this slide is about uh, the megapod or mass vaccination sites. So the, for example, the Oakland Coliseum um, has been uh, available for over two months now. Uh, it's a federal, state, and local collaboration between uh, FEMA, uh, the state of California, and the county uh, with up to 6,000 doses per day. There are drive-through options. So, um, so individuals in a, in a paratransit vehicle can drive through, they don't have to leave the vehicle, they get vaccinated and, and then, they, um, uh, they, then they leave. Same thing with the uh, county fairgrounds. Right now it's, uh, it's, well, it started out as a collaboration between Stanford Valley Care, Sutter and Alameda County. Um, it's drive through only at the moment. We are looking at uh, um, uh, options to, to not um, have to drive through, but uh, to rather uh, walk up or roll up into the uh, vaccination site. Community pods are uh, pods um, set in high priority zip codes. So examples of these include Fremont High School in Oakland, um, Ashland, uh, Cherryland, which is actually uh, located in the Hayward Acres um, uh, neighborhood. Uh, these are very, again, these are very, very high hit, uh, hard hit um, areas of the county. Um, the Fremont High Pod launched um, uh, uh, in early February and um, um, 
we've been able to vaccinate um, you know, thousands of people at that location. The Ashland Cherryland location just opened up, um, I want to say at the beginning of this month. And um, there have been a number of uh, what we call fire pop-ups. These are collaborations between health centers and fire departments. So these have been happening in South Hayward and East Oakland in collaboration with um, several um, health centers, um, including uh, La Clinica de la Raza, La Familia, and Tiburcio Vasquez Health Centers. These have been um, actually vaccinating much more than 1,000 doses per week each. Um, they are amongst our um, um, highest productivity uh, vaccinators. And um, we are looking at um, adding additional sites such as uh, Deep East Oakland in the future. So the next slide is about the focus on digital divide and mobility for those um, not only over 65, the slide says over 65, but, it, but you know, uh, when we first created this slide, that was the focus. Now vaccines are open up, open to everyone over the age of 16. But you can see that um, you know, traditionally, um, when we first launched, what we did was primarily digital marketing. Um, that is marketing through social media, through our website, through Twitter, um, and Nextdoor and other apps like that. Um, people would sign up through the county website. They would receive an email to schedule an appointment. They would drive to the site. And um, we also use, to some extent, flyers and word of mouth. For people without internet access, uh, we've, we've launched um, uh, PSAs, public service uh, announcements on TV, prints, and radio. Um, we also um, have set up a call center. So the call center has been active for more than a month now. So people without internet can call that location, uh, call the call center to schedule an appointment where they can receive assistance uh, in scheduling. And uh, uh, so they don't have to, to figure out by themselves where they can get a, a vaccine based on their individual um, situation. Um, there is public transportation available either through paratransit or um, BART and other uh, means of getting to, to the sites um, so that uh, you don't have to have a vehicle. Um, we, were, we also have been setting up drop-in vaccination to make, um, make it more accessible to people without internet access. And we've been working with families and CBOs to provide uh, support to those individuals. Now, moving on to those without uh, internet, as well as having uh, low mobility, um, we have been providing on-site assistance. So we have volunteers and staff who can assist pe people in getting to a pod. Um, we also have um, uh, collaborated with the paratransit agencies uh, around scheduling a wheelchair pickup. Um, and uh, we launched um, uh, a scheduling system for mobile vaccinators to come uh, to, to individuals' homes to vaccinate. So I'll, I'll go into more detail on that over the next few slides. Apologies for how busy this slide is. Um, so this slide is about strategies for um, individuals with low mobility. Uh, who are over the age of 65 or 16 to 64 with underlying conditions, including physical and mental disabilities. So as of March uh, 2021, all that residents and staff of long-term care facilities and most senior housing locations have been offered the vaccine. Efforts are underway to vaccinate uh, patients at dialysis centers. Actually, I think they have already been vaccinated. Um, because they received uh, vaccines last month. So what we're doing is um, identify, so there are several stages to, um, to um, um, ensuring that, that individuals with low mobility have access to vaccines. The first is identifying and uh, reaching out to them. Um, the second is being able to um, sort of collect the requests the third is putting together uh, teams of vaccinators. And the fourth is going out 
and doing the actual vaccination. So over the next few slides, I'll, I'll be going over those, those four steps in more detail. So the first step is um, uh, identification of these individuals who have uh, limited mobility and need transportation support or a visit from a mobile vaccinator. If they don't have digital access, they can call the uh, number shown on the screen, which is 510-208-4VAX to, um, to get an appointment. Um, we've also been working with, uh, to do a community outreach with faith and community-based organizations, PACE providers. So these are the, um, the uh, model programs for uh, elder care uh, through CEI and Unlock. We have also been pulling from uh, EMS data. So if somebody called 911 in anywhere in the county um, and uh, reported that they had a fall, we um, have that data because EMS is part of the county and, um, and have been contacting those individuals by phone to invite them to sign up for a, um, a mobile vaccination or if they can take paratransit, um, providing them with those resources. We've also been working with a lot of uh, meal providers. So um, you may be familiar with Meals on Wheels. Um, so many of, so there, there are um, five or six um, uh, Meals on Wheels providers in the county, and they've been uh, distributing flyers and surveys to their clients um, so that uh, uh, they can be offered um, either in-home vaccination or paratransit resources. As far as um, how we're tracking folks uh, who need a vaccination, we have a a central database that we have created. It's um, on our website. It, it's also um, <clears throat> when somebody calls into the call center, they, uh, they are entered into the database as well. As far as um, who's, who the mobile vaccinators are and the uh, transportation providers, um, I mentioned we have uh, pharmacy partners We've also opened up a request for proposals. Um, it's actually due later this week, and we'll be reviewing the proposals um, and uh, we'll be contracting with uh, um, home health agencies, CBOs, uh, that's community-based organizations, as well as um, other types of vendors to be part of our mobile vaccination pool. Um, the Partnerships with paratransit agencies are now live on the county um, uh, vaccine website. Um, we also have a downloadable PDF. So if you're working with uh, an agency, you can download it and distribute the, um, the flyer to your, your clients, which is what we've been doing. We've been sending it out to many of our, our partners over the last uh, month or two now. Um, in addition, uh, we've been working with uh, faith-based organizations and EMS to identify seniors who need to be vaccinated. Um, there's also a growing list of organizations that are hosting uh, what are called pop-up sites. Um, so I wanna to touch on this a little bit. This is, this is separate from the um, in-home vaccinations. What we're doing is partnering with organizations like uh, regional centers of the East Bay um, there's actually a, an entire list here. Uh, and it's actually a growing list. So regional centers of the East Bay, Friends of Children with Special Needs, uh, uh, CRIL. Um, ben, can you remind me what does uh, CRIL stand for? Yeah, it's uh, Community Resources for Independent Living. Thank you. Um, Sunflower Hill, Toolworks, Ability Now, uh, various adult education programs. Um, the list is actually several dozen long now. And what we do is um, we'll host a pop-up vaccination site. So um, um, where the um, partner organizations will support clients in coming to the location, um, for example, using paratransit vehicles. And we, the county provides the, the vaccines and the pharmacy partnership and um, um, you can see uh, an example in the photo up above where people will come to the location, they'll get vaccinated, and then they'll be um, transported uh, back to their homes. 
This uh, obviously works for, for, for many individuals, but for some who are um, truly homebound for various reasons, um, the, the in-home vaccinations is really the, uh, the method that we're preferring. Um, and then um, putting it all together in terms of getting people vaccinated. So, you know, people are getting notified or they're signing up by themselves, either through the, the website or through, through um, the phone. Um, we're vetting the list and I'll go into the questions in, in a moment. Um, as far as uh, ensuring that we're really, you know, um, um, that we're really, uh, um, oops, finding the people that we, that uh, truly need an in-home vaccination. And um, then we're scheduling them and either public health nurses, medical reserve corps, fire departments uh, will be um, visiting them in their home. I'm also happy to announce that um, a couple of weeks ago, or actually last week, this, the state announced that uh, EMS, that is um, uh, ambulances across the state, will be um, providing in-home vaccinations as well. Um, they haven't provided any details yet and uh, we're waiting for next steps, but uh, we hope that that resource will be um, available soon. And um, we will be starting with the, uh, these in-home vaccinations on April 26th. Um, so that's a week from today, pending decision on um, the Johnson & Johnson vaccine. I'll go into this in a little bit more detail in a later slide. Um, I think I've gone over this slide on getting the word out already um, in, in some detail, but uh, yeah, so we have uh, PSAs, newspaper stories, radio PSAs, flyers, um, people can call the phone number. Um, we're also working with a number of trusted messengers for assistance uh, around appointments and engagement, in-person outreach, such as uh, friendly visitor programs meal and food delivery organizations. Our website is uh, accessible um, in multiple languages uh, as well. So there's, uh, so the website is, um, has like eight different languages uh, available on it. Um, and next we're gonna be working on multilingual and culturally specific media as well to make sure that um, everyone who needs an in-home vaccination or, or needs uh, specialized transport um, has access. Um, this website lists um, all of the um, community organizations and um, partners that we've been working with to get the word out. It's a very long list, so I won't um, read through it, but you can see, for example, Disability Culture Club, um, uh, the Disability Rights and Education Defense Fund. Uh, so yes, we've been working with um, Susan and others to get the word out. Um, and um, yeah, there are a number of senior organizations on here as well. And so how do we, um, how do we ensure eligibility and uh, make sure that we're, uh, so I, this was one of the questions that came out on Friday. Um, so uh, people are signing up either through a CBO or through their provider. Um, they can call the 510-2084 uh, VAX number, or they can go to the website for sign up. There's a, um, a survey uh, for signing up, um, or they're asked questions over the phone. And they're basically two questions um, that they are either self-attesting to or their caregiver, caregiver or navigator are, um, are answering related to requiring uh, in-home vaccination or um, specialized transport. So the first one is, I am unable to ride public transit without the assistance of another person and require specialized transportation to a vaccination site. If they answer yes to that, that means that they need assistance getting to a vaccination site and we're providing them with the paratransit uh, resources. If the answer no, there's a second question that goes, I am bedridden uh, or unable to leave my home, sorry, there's a typo there, due to mobility challenges or illness and require in-home vaccination. If they answer yes to this, then they get into our database as requiring an in-home vaccination. 
Then they receive a, a phone call during the scheduling and intake process where the uh, questions are asked again. And um, if they answer yes to this question a second time, then they are eligible and they're scheduled for, for an appointment. Um, so that's, that's the process in our county. So um, just to give some further detail about the status of in-home vaccination. So we were planning to start on April 14th. So that was last um, Wednesday, but last Tuesday, the feds announced the pause on the J&J &J vaccine. Last Friday, the CDC announced um, that the, the pause would continue pending additional data. They wanted to uh, collect data for another week. They have scheduled another meeting this coming Friday to review the additional data. Um, uh, as Susan mentioned in my introduction, I'm a, uh, I have a background in virology and, um, and epidemiology, public health, clinical trials. I anticipate that the CDC will release the J&J &J vaccine um, this, this coming Friday, in which case we will start um, in-home vaccinations the following Monday. If they tell us that um, the J&J vaccine will continue to be on hold, then we will start on Monday the 26th regardless, and we will use uh, Moderna instead. We won't be using the Pfizer vaccine because of the cold chain logistics required and, the, um, and some of the other infield logistics that are required. So um, we would definitely start with uh, either J&J or Moderna. So there were questions about where else in the county um, can people get uh, in-home vaccinations. I sit on a, a regional um, um, vaccine um, network meeting. And so there are representatives from many of the counties there. You can see the ones that are listed um, uh, on this screen include um, Sonoma County. So uh, they confirmed that they are doing in-home vaccinations. All of the ones that I'm going to read off have confirmed that they are doing in-home vaccinations and, um, and how to access them are, are on the slides. So Sonoma County, Marin, San Mateo. So San Mateo, you can either go to the website or send an email to the um, email address that's on the slide. Santa Cruz County, Contra Costa, of course, Alameda and Santa Clara counties are all doing in-home vaccinations. Um, someone asked about um, Santa Clara County. Uh, so the website, if you click on the link and you click through, you'll get to a phone number that you can call to request an in-home vaccination. I didn't hear from Napa or Solano counties, um, and I went to their websites and could not find any information about in-home vaccinations. So, um, so I'm assuming that they are not offering that. Uh, my last slide is uh, some of the challenges that uh, we're continuing to address. Um, so if anyone here has ever used paratransit, um, you're aware that uh, you actually schedule two appointments, one to pick you up from your home and take you to your appointments, and then they drop you off. And then your second appointment is to have them come pick you up at a designated time and take you back to your home. Um, We've heard some feedback that this is um, cumbersome and um, especially for vaccine visits that tend to be very short, you know, typically no more than 30 minutes. Um, having someone disembark from the paratransit vehicle is, uh, can be very <clears throat> uh, cumbersome for them. And um, so we, we've been asking them to, uh, and been, we've been advocating with county supervisors and others to have them uh, have, have uh, the paratransit agencies do single ride, uh, uh, ride where they, um, where you can stay in the vehicle, get your vaccine, and then be taken home. Uh, we were successful with, um, uh, with LAPTA, which is the Livermore Amador Valley Transportation Authority. They have a program called WHEELS um, that serve the Tri-Valley area. And, um, and so they are currently um, doing single ride through to the fairgrounds um, location. Paratransit of the East Bay, we haven't had as much success. 
So we encourage uh, everyone to um, advocate as well. Both uh, agencies do have auto qualification, actually um, wheels in uh, the Tri-Valley area eliminated qualification requirements. Anyone can get a, a ride if, if they request it. Paratransit of the East Bay has a, um, has a more uh, simple uh, emergency eligibility process for short-term um, uh, COVID-related uh, needs. Um, we are continuing to scale up our call center operations in Alameda County, so there can be a bit of a, a wait time, uh, but, uh, but uh, yeah, do be patient with us. We're also scaling up mobile vaccine partnerships and logistics, but, um, but yeah, we are ready to go with, with that. And then um, with, with any populations, their concerns about um, particular vaccines or vaccination in general, uh, due to either the mistrust that I mentioned, perhaps due to uh, misinformation, or due to um, uh, concerns that uh, may be out of scale to the reality of, of these vaccines. An example of that would be um, the current pause on J&J, &J, and you know, your chances of um, having a, an adverse event from the Johnson & Johnson vaccine uh, is, uh, is smaller than being struck by lightning twice. So, um, so it just helps to, to, when we can communicate out and put the uh, risks into perspective. So that's my last slide, um, open to feedback and questions. Okay, Dr. Doe, if you um, stop sharing, I can go ahead and um, see um, if anything's come up. I just wanted for people who can't see the chat, I wanted to repeat a couple of things. Um, we will distribute the, the slides and the list of counties who are currently planning or doing at home visits after the presentation. Um, um, Easy Desert is serving Berkeley and Al Albany residents with disabilities to provide round trip tips to get vaccines. And um, Robin Earth from CIL shared that paratransit requires exact fare or a paratransit ticket. It is much harder to access cash these days because of the pandemic. Many people are not going to ATMs and getting cash back because they're not going into stores. Um, paratransit turned away one person who was trying to get a vaccine appointment because she did not have the exact $4 and would not accept her $20 bill, even though she said they could keep the cash. So Dr. Doe, do you know who, where we would, um, where people would call if they have, want to um, complain about their service? Do they call um, directly to paratransit or do they call the Alameda County um, Public Health Department to talk about transportation? Ben is our paratransit guru, so I would prefer to <laughs> Yeah, I can. I can take that one. So yeah, I would say contact paratransit directly, although I will say that many of the paratransit providers right now uh, should be providing free rides to vaccine clinics as long as a rider can show that they have a confirmed appointment, whether that's, you know, printed out or an email confirmation, something like that. So, um, you know, I'd be interested to hear more about what exactly happened in that situation. And um, so yeah, feel free to reach out to me. Um, and I can try and troubleshoot or see if we can um, try to address some of the barriers with paratransit. Okay, thank you, Ben. If anybody wants to, if anybody wants to ask a question that hasn't been responded to from the ones we sent in, could you, if you could raise your hand using the reactions um, down at the bottom of your screen, that would be great. Or um, unmute yourself and I'll sort of watch to make sure that we don't all mute at the same time. So if anybody has a question, let us know. I'm watching for hands, okay. There's somebody on the phone. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and um, let you, it's, um, the last four digits are 84, 8057. What is your website, please? Yes, the, the website, we'll, we'll put it into the chat box. It's also in the slides. If you just, oh. um, 
Yeah, I have... can't see that. I'm sorry. I'm visually impaired. Yeah, let me let me read it out to you. It's COVID, so C O V I D dash nineteen the one nine. So just the numbers dot ac gov uh, ac gov dot org. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I will say there was one question in the um, list of questions sent in that I couldn't really answer on slides. Um, so I'll just read the uh, question out loud. The question is, where's the logic of placing our family at risk to get a shot to lower our risk? How can I force them to come to our home to give us our second doses? Um, I wasn't entirely sure what the question was. So if the person who asked that question could maybe clarify, that would be great. Okay, this is Susan again. Um, Leah, Lisa, do you want to go ahead and ask, ask your question? You have to unmute yourself. Sorry. Sure, thank you. Sorry about that. Um, thanks for all the great information. I really appreciate it. Um, I'm in San Mateo County, so we don't have anything like this. I joined today just to, just to hear what everybody's doing. Um, I thought I heard you say something about the state potentially doing a mobile vaccination program or something like that. I may have misinterpreted what you said, but if so, if you could clarify, if not, then maybe I'm making things up. <laughs> yeah, so San, uh, San Mateo County is doing in-home vaccinations. Um, I In the slides is a link to um, their vaccines clinic page. And there's one called Fox Home Health. They are providing uh, vaccinations of the homebound. And the number to call is 707-573-0223. Um, what I mentioned about the state is that the state is making, um, is, is working with uh, ambulance providers um, in across all the counties to provide in-home vaccinations. Uh, that program hasn't launched yet, so we are, we are waiting for that. It's interesting though because we haven't heard anything about a mobile or a, yeah a mobile vaccination program in San Mateo County, and we've asked because there's several seniors in the North County that need this service. I know there's one in North Central San Mateo that's working specifically with seniors and people with with disabilities, but not all across the board. So well, I was told by the county's vaccination lead that, uh, and they actually copied and pasted from the website. I'll, I'll go ahead and put that into, I mean, it's it's in the slides, but I'll go ahead and put that into the. Um, yeah, thank you. Yeah, I'm a quadriplegic and it's hard for me to write. So if you could put it in the chat, I can copy it. Thank you. Okay. Right, and this is Susan again. And just to remind you, we'll be sending the slides um, with all of the information about the counties that have, um, the area counties that have in-home um, vaccines scheduled or are doing them already. Um, is there, any, do we have any other questions? Oh, uh, yes, Catherine. Hi, thanks. So I'm wondering, once you're going out to, a, um, to vaccinate someone in their home, is there any ability to vaccinate the entire household or that, at that time and just, just sort of get everyone in the house um, caregivers, um, since it seems like the one of the biggest time sinks in that process is getting there. And so it could be maybe more efficient to do the whole household. I'm wondering if that's a possibility. For Alameda County, yes, that's what we're doing. Um, I can't speak on behalf of the other counties. And there was a question, a direct message to me about Los Angeles County. I'm sorry, I don't know anything about Los Angeles. I'm focused in Alameda County. Um, and this is Susan, we can see if we can find that information and include it um, when we send out all the materials. And is the process for that in Alameda County 
when the person makes the appointment that they indicate who else is in the home or is there flexibility if somebody is there but they didn't remember you know to make to can they be spontaneous in who they vaccinate in the home or does there have to be appointments made ahead of time unfortunately it can't be spontaneous it's got to be in advance at the time that the appointment's made and that's because we only have enough vaccine we're only bringing enough vaccine out into the field that um, that we have appointments for Otherwise, we might end up with a situation where we, we are throwing away doses at the end of the day or, or they're going bad, and we don't want that to happen. Thank you. Um, and just to follow, this is Susan, just to follow up on the um, question of other counties outside of the Bay Area that may be doing in-home vaccination. This Friday at noon, the members of the California Vaccine Advisory Committee, um, the senior and disability representatives will be on, uh, be presenting, um, will be sending out the registration for that after we're finished here today. And they'll, we'll, I'll give that question to them ahead of time also, because they'll have up, some up-to-date information from their vaccine committee meetings. So just checking, do we have any more questions? This is Susan, it doesn't look like it. So if you have any closing remarks, Dr. Doe or Ben, um, this is the time and otherwise we can go ahead and let everybody go. Okay, it looks like that was it. Um, yeah, people have been direct messaging me so you can't see these questions. Okay. Um, so, um, one of them is you mentioned an RFP that is due this week. You have the name, number, or location uh, details. If you um, if you send um, uh, if you can put your uh, email address in the chat box, Michelle, I will um, send you a copy of the RFP. Anybody else? Give me a second to copy it since I can't, since uh -huh. it doesn't let you copy and paste. <laughs> oh, there's a question from Robin Earth. Are paratransit rides free to any vaccine appointments? Uh, I believe it varies by paratransit uh, provider. So let me put in the chat the link to our paratransit resources page on our website, which will have some of that information about uh, what various paratransit providers are doing and whether they're providing free rides. So I know, for example, uh, Rapid and Wheels are providing free rides to all vaccination appointments. I think East Bay Paratransit may be just the Coliseum site. And so if there are people, I've gotten a couple of direct messages about how to make those appointments in Alameda County for the, um, for the in-home vaccines. So it, do you just want to repeat one more time the website that they should go to to make the appointment? Yeah, so it would, I believe it would be our, just our vaccine main page. Uh, and if you go there at the top, there's a link that says uh, COVID-19 vaccination registration. So I'll put that into the chat real quick. It, so it's covid-19.acgov.org forward slash vaccines. And again, we'll put this information in the email with the, with the um, copy of the slides. Okay, well, thank you, Dr. Doe and Ben for joining us th th this week. Um, and I wanna say thank you to Tammy and Lisa and, our, and Otia for Spanish translate interpretation. And hopefully you guys can join us on Friday with the, with the California Vaccine Advisory Committee members. Okay, everybody take care. Thank, thank you. Everyone. Bye. -bye.